What's up soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Listen, I know you know all about curry goat. And we're doing all different types of curry goat right here on this channel and on CaribbeanPod.com. But today, something which was requested maybe five years ago. From time to time I do this one in my home, but I've never recorded it to share it with you guys. Stewed or stewed goat. You may want to call it brown stew, but I don't like using this whole brown stew kind of thing. Stew is stew. Now, if you're from North America, from Europe, from wherever, and you're accustomed to a certain type of stew, this is not that. This is an island style stew goat with banging flavors. Check it out. You're gonna, hey, you're gonna love this one. I'm telling you. And as with the majority of Caribbean recipes, especially meats, fish, seafood, and all that. We've got to marinate it. So we've got that goat in there. It's been cut into one and a half inch pieces. It's been washed with the juice of lime and lemon and water. I've rinsed it, it's dry. Cut off as much of the fat as you, as you can. Uh, there are bones in there. I'm going in with salt. Now here's the thing, I remember about four years ago when I reached out to a friend of mine on Instagram and we were talking about stew goat and cooking goat in general, he always liked adding the salt at the end because his take is the salt will toughen the goat. I have found that to be a little bit misleading but it is just my take. If you want to salt it later on you can certainly do that. So we've got salt in there. Let's go in with some fresh ground black pepper. You know the last time I showed this electric pepper grinder on here somebody had an issue with it. Why am I so lazy? Well, do you use a food processor? Hmm, do you use a blender? Hmm, leave me in my little electric mill there. So black pepper, a little bit. Pull out that Angostura bitters. A few drops in there. We're making stew after all. That will be delightful in there. We need a little Worcestershire. So go in with some of that Worcestershire. Yeah, I use quite a bit of that, so that's why I have such a big bottle. It's time now for one of the key ingredients in, this, in any sort of Caribbean food. I notice I've had this in the fridge on a high temperature there. So this is my Caribbean green seasoning. Two heaping tablespoons of that. And I do mine in olive oil if you notice the oil on the top there. And what it does, you notice the vibrancy and the color. And if you were here, you would be able to smell. Let me throw a little close up. That... Uh, the herbs and garlic and peppers and everything which makes up a good Caribbean seasoning. Don't use water anymore. Don't use vinegar. Use olive oil. And that thing remains good in the fridge for months. So we've got the Caribbean green seasoning. And if you're looking for that recipe, you can find it on CaribbeanPod.com. I am fresh out of scotch bonnet peppers. So I've got my homemade pepper sauce. And we've got maybe I think the number is up to about 15 different recipes for making this now on CaribbeanPod.com. So about half a tablespoon of that Car Caribbean pepper sauce, any hot sauce you like. If you have um, fresh scotch bonnet pepper, you can put scotch bonnet, habanero, any sort of spicy pepper that you like, you can put in there. We're gonna go in with one small onion. And if you wanna put a large onion in there, you know this is one of those things, something you like, you add more of something you don't like, you hold off or you just add a little bit off. You know, like when I'm cooking um, Caribbean Chinese food, I don't like sesame oil, so I don't like it. So, um, these are called pimento peppers or seasoning peppers. It'd probably be difficult for you guys to source it, but if you can source it, it adds a lovely flavor to any sort of meat or fish or seafood or anything. And again, guys, this is going to be one of them long recipes because I'm trying my best to explain everything as best as I could to you guys. So three of those these are just the tiny green ones and these are fresh out of my garden we need a tomato i'm just going to cut off the top stem area that's going to go into the rubbish and just give that tomato a rough chop like so all we'll need next is a tiny bit here about a tablespoon of ketchup because the acidity from that ketchup as well as this tomato yo if you haven't done it yet Please do so. You're going to love it in there. We've got that tomato ketchup going in there. That's about a tablespoon or so. And all you would do now is give that a good mix. 
you will also find along with that saw that I talked about there getting the goat off from the start some people don't like washing their goat with um, with lemon juice or, or lime juice as I did they like washing it with flour and water because they say the, um, the acid in that um, citrus toughens up the meat so typically what I would recommend doing here now is allow this to marinate overnight best flavor we're gonna jump right away and start cooking this because this is gonna slowly braise goat can be tough depending on how old the animal is and everything you know it's a guessing game but for now cover that up put it in the fridge allow it to marinate but we're gonna get cooking we're gonna get cooking right away man in my big heavy pot here I've got a tablespoon and a quarter and about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil and for that I'm gonna go in with about a tablespoon and a half of golden brown sugar and I keep saying this every time we do a sort of a Caribbean stew recipe a lot of you have never had this technique it's more of a technique than anything else of stewing with brown sugar you would think the dish would be sweet I guarantee you there is nothing sweet about this what's gonna happen here and let's talk about that for a second high heat that is gonna melt that sugar is going to melt down it's going to go frothy then it's going to start taking on some color just before it goes black it's very important before it goes black and you'll keep seeing me go do this here you want to add the seasoned meat today if it goes black shut everything down allow it to cool down wash the pan and start over allow it to cool down though but for now we want that see starting to melt on the corners there so i'm going to move it around and the reason why I like to move it around in my pot is because I know there are hot spots like this side here is more hot on my stove than over there with the burner for some reason so I'm just going to move that around and we're trying to get that sort of deep amber color before we start adding the pieces of meat to the pot so you can see it's gone frothy now it's starting to take on that amber colors in certain spots so this is why I'm moving around it moving it around and you want a dry spoon make sure your spoon is dry you add water to this and partner you in for a rude awakening your kitchen will go smoky unfortunately so I do apologize for that turn the fan on over your stove and organize accordingly notice how it's starting to go amber now we just want to go just a little bit darker before we start adding pieces of meat to the pot move that around a couple more times everything to be nice and even and this is where the story begins I'm going to toss half of it in and I'm going to move it around and I'm going to go in with the other half scrape everything into the pot and it's really important that you move everything around just to pick up all that color and to coat the pieces of goat with that browning on the bottom there now what I'm going to do at this point after I've stirred it up quite a bit I'm going to turn my heat down to medium high it was on high all the while and I'm going to put the lid on there and let that start to come up to a boil five minutes later <clears throat> and there will be a lot of natural juices which have sprung up there so we're going to give that a stir and notice all that liquid there I didn't add any liquid to that look at that give that a good stir we're gonna put the lid back on and let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes because the whole idea is to intensify the flavor here so by by cooking it down in its own juices we're gonna achieve that and we're gonna burn off all that liquid but you know put the lid back on 10 minutes boom bam and to intensify the flavor after all this is the ultimate stew goat what we're gonna do at this point now it's been 12 minutes with that lid on I'm uh, on medium high heat I'm going right back up to high we're gonna burn off all of that liquid down on the bottom there that soup we're getting rid of that and that's gonna intensify the flavor and the color and then we're gonna go in with the other ingredients to slowly braise this until it's fork tender falling off the bones mama you as that liquid cooks down there and we get back to a, a dry pot I'm gonna go in with some grated ginger 
and I don't put ginger in my green seasoning because not every dish I make I like ginger in there but for sure when you're making stew as we do in the Caribbean you need that grated ginger in there now scallions is already in my green seasoning fresh thyme is already in my green seasoning and garlic is already in my green seasoning but I like repeating this is the ultimate stew goat so this is why you've seen me repeat everything because I want that enhanced flavor I want when you serve this to your family they're like mama when we get in stew goat again but sunny we just have it right now why are you asking for later and to be honest with you I don't blame small man eh? but this goat will taste so good they'll be wanting this time and time again what is that deep rich color we got going on here and here's the thing friends the ultimate stew goat and I man the little Chris from Caribbean part is the one who coined the phrase ultimate right here on YouTube go ahead everybody copying it and, and talking about ultimate this and ultimate that but I man is the one go back 2009 is when I dropped the first ultimate in all the rock -tum -tum. all that liquid has burned off now all of it and here's a little tip goat can be very fatty I want you guys to see something you notice all of that oil there like, look at it there's a lot of oil what I like doing is boom take some of that out I'm gonna take as much out of that as I can and I'm gonna put it to go into the rubbish we are trying to put that down our sink that will clog your sink try not to get any of that garlic and all that going and don't talk about flavor yes we will get flavor in other ways Caribbean people we've got to stop eating all that fat and talking about hey that is flavor boy that is all the flavor no stop that Caribbean restaurant stop serving that serving that to us you will kill us and we won't be customers for lifetime lifetime will be short please and thank you if you all thought the flavor stop there coconut milk we from the Caribbean that coconut milk must make an appearance that coconut milk is gonna add you know, a nice sweetness to this dish and that was one and a half cups of coconut milk that is not enough liquid to braise this and make it fork tender and falling off the bones I promise to you and you deserve you deserve tender goat so in the same bowl that we marinated the goat in two and a half wait did he say two and a half two and a half cups of water we're gonna bring that back up to a bowl now and give it a little scrapey scrape on the bottom you know we want to pick up all that thing on the side there all that fond on the bottom there bring this up to a boil then we're gonna reduce it to a sort of a simmer and we're gonna let that go for about two and a half to three hours yes low and slow pelt with that um the pressure cooker no you're not developing real flavor with pressure cooker man by laziness stop that so you notice that vigorous bubble that we got going there that is too much turn that all the way down to low let that simmer we want that to simmer every 20 minutes or so come in hit it to stir and then there's this beer niceness happening up in there just look at that rich gravy already hey the color alone boy and then remember all that garlic and ginger and everything we added additionally remember all those things were already in the green seasoning it was already in the marinade but low and slow now on slightly a jar so maybe quarter of a centimeter space there things to breathe it has to breathe everything like to breathe all right it's been going for about two and a half hours on that low simmer notice all that liquid has gone down two and a half hours later on that simmer notice all that water has reduced we got a lovely gravy just look at a nice thick gravy there I remember the residual heat will also help thicken up that gravy some more some personalizations if the goat is still tough take a piece out sample it if it's still tough add some more water another cup of water in there and let it go for another hour or so and remember the key here is nice tender pieces of goat these things the stems of the um, the time you can remove that final little thing salt taste it for salt and adjust it to your own liking um, at the end of the day it has to be, you know you're the one eating it your family are the one eating it I like to go in with some parsley that's straight out of my garden and we're gonna give that a mix that's just gonna brighten up everything Chris here, caribbean pot.com 
the ultimate stew goat or stewed goat you really want to give this one a try now remember um, we grated that ginger in there because we don't want people getting a surprise well it's their thing a big piece of ginger if they like that they like that but I man don't let me turn the stove off because I need some gravy for that rice always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me the ultimate stew goat as I said do give it a try apologies for the long video but you know I man had to explain Irie? Irie.